Um, and go. Well, first off, I'd like to say thanks to all you guys for being on today. And, um, you know, we were excited yesterday, obviously, to start our official fall season. And, uh, you know, we were able uh, for the first two weeks return to activity, just getting the players back in shape, really. Coach McMillan, our strength coach, and our trainer were in charge of them. We went two weeks of skill instruction and felt like we were able to start yesterday with a scrimmage. We'll try scrimmage four days a week this fall, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and go five days a week for the next month here, finishing up October 23rd or 24th with the Maroon and White Series. Um, very excited about our team. Feel like we've got a much older, experienced, balanced group, uh, much like uh, we did in 2015 and 16, just with the return of several fifth-year seniors um, as well as probably five or six guys that we felt like we were going to lose to the draft last year had it at least gone 10, uh, 10 rounds. And so we were fortunate to get those guys back. I know they, you know, wanted to start a pro career, but the op opportunity to come back and, and get close or finish their degree here at Texas A&M is a blessing in itself too. But those guys have done a great job leading us thus far. Thankful the weather worked out yesterday. Don't know it's going to work out today, but I feel like, the rest of the week will be great for us. Coach, how intriguing do you expect the fall position battles to be, especially at catcher in the corner positions, infield and outfield, with a lot of – looks like a lot of depth on paper. Yeah, it's going to be a, a challenge for, for those guys each and every day to go and earn those jobs. And it's our job as a coaching staff to try to find a way to get all those bats in the lineup. And if that means some guys got to go to other positions, whether it's – corner spot in the outfield and, you know, the DH and, and trying to have all of those experienced, talented bats in the lineup. It's a good problem for us to have and certainly serves as competition on a daily basis for them. Coach, what's your outlook looking for the, uh, the rotation uh, heading into fall and uh, uh, what's some, some guys to, to look out for as you're um, gearing up for that? You know, yesterday we started two freshmen on the mound, Nathan Detmer, out of San Antonio and Wyatt Tucker out of East Texas, Douglasville. And those guys, obviously, it was their first time on the mound, a little revved up. Uh, but they were very impressive physically and with their stuff. Tomorrow, we'll start Bryce Miller. He'll go against Will Johnston. And uh, Will uh, really came on this summer, had a nice summer. We're going to give Bryce the opportunity to start and see what that looks like. Throughout the course of the fall, um, Chandler Joswalk, Chris Weber, uh, we'll start for us on Thursday and on Friday, Trevor Werner and uh, Jonathan Childress will start. And, you know, Mo Menifee is another guy that, um, you know, we'll take a look at starting. So for us, I mean, it's really about, you know, letting them go and pitch and battle throughout the fall and whatever pieces fall into that starting puzzle. Great. The other guys are going to make our bullpen that much deeper with certainly an awful lot of experience. Kind of building off that, Coach, uh, how difficult is it to make a transition from a closing role to a starting role like Bryce Miller is trying to do? And what do you like from what you saw from this summer with the Bombers? Well, he, he went and got a taste of that starting this summer for those guys. And that's something that, you know, Bryce, rather than having to go and get maybe the three best hitters in the lineup out in the ninth inning with, you know, one run lead, he's going to have to go two and maybe three times through the lineup. So I think it's going to be that much more magnified that he's going to have to establish the fact that he can throw a change up for a strike, not just to the left-handed hitters, but the, the right-handed hitters as well. I mean, he's obviously can be 93 to 98 miles an hour, but if I can pin my ears back 2-0 and know that I'm getting at it, I can hit a, a 98 mile an hour fastball if I know I'm getting it. He's got to be able to land a change up on occasion and, and pitch backwards throughout some of those spots when you go two and three times through the lineup. And he certainly has the ability to do that. It's just a matter of going out there and doing that. Werner's coach, got some incredible the... velo, Coach. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, let me jump in real quick here. Werner has got some incredible velocity. What has your bullpen been like with him? Has he been able to really – have you pitched him enough to know whether he can hold that velo, maybe a second, maybe even third time through the lineup? Well, that's a great question, Gabe. For us, we, we are, are making all of his throws be that as a pitcher. And, you know, he's taken ground balls and done that with the position players, but we've limited his throws to where all of his throwing is going to be on the pitching side of things. Trevor such, has such an amazing gift with his arm and the ability to repeat his delivery, the ability to throw strikes and be mid to upper 90s. 
that we need to take a long, hard look at that guy as a starter for us. I mean, he is just so super talented and still give him the opportunity to get the at-bats that he needs because he's another guy that can be a force in the lineup and change games with, with one swing of the bat. So I want to see him being fresh week in, week out, arm-wise, and then we go out and, and give him a starting opportunity to see what that looks like as well because, you know, he, like Bryce, has stuff that can make you – feel pretty bad about yourself 48 the next 48 hours after a Friday night. And we want to take a long, hard look at that as well. Coach, I just want to ask about the, the, the atmosphere right now around the team. And does the start of fall practice have any more meaning this year? The fact that you guys had the season cut short and you're after a long off season back on, on the field. I, I think so. I think our guys are so fired up just to be together and throughout the two weeks of for our return to activity throughout the two weeks of, um, you know, our skill instruction, the guys are just happy to be around one another. So many times we play into June, they load their cars up, they go off to summer ball. And by the time they finish summer ball, they're loading their car up to come back to campus and they're a little bit fried and their batteries are recharged. They're excited. They're thankful. And I, I, especially the seniors that got an opportunity to come back are not taking anything to, for granted. So many times, when you go through a fall, you feel like, ah, I just got to get through the fall, uh, especially if you're an older guy. But you can just feel the opening day intent, not just out of our freshmen that are going out for their first, you know, practice officially yesterday, but for the, for the older guys as well. They're just excited to be together. And I feel that in everything that we're doing. It's not just let's get through it. Let's have some fun with it and enjoy the moment that we have together because, you know, this – COVID is so volatile up and down. Our guys have done a great job, knock on wood, of staying together, staying, you know, keeping everybody as a group together. And uh, I don't think anybody's going to take anything for granted moving forward. Coach, you got to see about a third of a, a season for transition to Coach Seeley and Coach Kaye running the offense. How much more comfortable are you now with all those guys being able to come back and not only now they know a little bit of the offense, but they can impart it under your newcomers that are going to play in the field. Well, I think you throw Coach Pennington, Cliff Pennington, into that mix as well. And and for so many uh, of our position players being back, it's just they have hit the ground and picked up right where they left off. And uh, the terminology, the routines, the practice routines, you know, from an offensive standpoint, just been fun to see. I mean, guys like Mikey Honer and uh, – Bryce Blom and some of those other guys have just done a great job integrating our young guys. But it's not been, hey, let me introduce myself to you as a coach. This is my philosophy. This is what we want to do. Our guys understand that we want to play fast, and this is how we're going to go about it. And um, Coach Callier, Coach Sealing, Coach Pennington, to have all three of those guys back together again with such so many returners back it has been a blessing one day into practice. But throughout the last two weeks of skill instruction, it's been fun to just watch that pick up where we left off. Rob, what are your expectations for some of these JUCO positional pieces and adding a, a, potentially adding some real thump in your lineup with the two kids from Grayson Thompson and, and Taylor Smith and then the Sturgis kid from UTSA? Well, and you can throw also uh, Brett Minich into that group who is from yeah. uh, Brett is a big, strong, physical left-handed hitter, hit up an opposite field home run yesterday. Brian Sturgis. Uh, it's just a super hitter, super teammate, um, you know, and has had great success. I think he hit 20 doubles and 10 home runs the year before at UTSA. And certainly Taylor Smith and uh, Thompson, we got an opportunity to see up close and personal two years ago against Incarnate Word and uh, just su two super talented get kids. Taylor Smith is a physical, strong hitter with a great approach and great leadership qualities. And Jordan Thompson hit a three-run homer against us a couple years ago that we still have that taste in our mouth. But, you know, he's a wound tight little stick of dynamite that can run, and he's got some sock in the bat. So those guys were brought in to be impact players, and certainly with all the things that have gone on getting so many players back, that has not changed. And I think that's just made competition better and will throughout the rest of the fall and into January. A new wrinkle this season, Coach, are the, the fifth-year seniors that are coming back with the extra year of eligibility. What do you think the advantages are of having those super seniors and that added experience in both your staff and, and in, the, in the field? Well, it just makes our coaching staff that much deeper. When, when you talk about guys like Hunter Coleman and Mikey Honer and Ray Alejo, those guys have seen it all. They've been through it all. They 
I think have an understanding of what we're trying to get accomplished as a coaching staff. And they have such great high baseball IQ and not just the baseball side of things, but they understand what young people are going through and experiencing the failures that they're going to experience throughout the fall. And they are just such great leaders to those young guys. And it doesn't have to be screaming and yelling. It's about spending time with them, putting their arm around them and, you know, saying, Hey, I was going through this not too long ago. It's going to be okay. You're a good player and you belong here. But those three guys are a true blessing to have regardless of their age, but to have the experiences that they've gone through and, they, their care factor is so high for this program and, you know, for the young guys in it, it's, it's a special, special thing for us as a staff. Okay. Rob, with, some, with some uncertainty with what uh, you're going to see as far as maybe weekend scheduling and, and, and how you're going to fit, you know, uh, your games in, when do you have to know how to, you know, prepare for uh, how many starting pitchers you may need next year? Uh, and and how that will play out? Scott, I, I don't know the answer to that as to when we're going to have any direction in that regard. We still don't have a conference schedule yet. We have our non-conference schedule uh, lined up, obviously. But, you know, our conference schedule is something that, that we don't have yet. And we'll continue to visit once a month as a as a conference as to what direction, you know, we're going to end up getting pointed to as far as are we going to play a conference-only schedule? Is it going to be extended? just what's going to happen, I, I think, I, and I don't know how other teams are in the league, but I feel strongly about our pitching, uh, the experience back. Certainly we don't have Asa Lacey and Christian Roa back, but we've got a lot of super talented guys back as well that, you know, can put us in a position to win each and every game and put us in a position to win each and every game late, regardless of who's at the back of the bullpen. So, you know, when we find that out, I think we're just going to all have to deal with sudden change. And that's something all of us have learned to do for the last four and a half months is a sudden change is upon us. And we've got to deal with it and be able to, you know, do what we're asked to do to the best of our ability. And we're certainly in a position to do that. Rob, is Werner still a factor at short? And then what do you think of the Harrison kid targets? What, what do you think of your shortstop situation? You know, Trevor Werner, based on what we're going to ask of him, at least this fall, um, uh, as a pitcher, is probably going to move, be moved to a corner position. Um, Ryan Targosh is an ultra-talented guy that will be at third base, switch hitter, strong physical kid. has got a high baseball IQ at shortstop. Uh, you'll see a young guy there, whether it's Kalai Harrison uh, or Cade Murka, two true freshmen, two really talented guys that played short for us yesterday that, you know, we're going to battle it out throughout the fall. I mean, they're both, both advanced with the glove and, you know, both very, very competitive kids that, you know, both had really nice days yesterday. Had, touch, had tough chances defensively and made every one of them. And I think Kate hit a double for us and, uh, in the first scrimmage. So it's good to see. And Kalai had a couple of really good at-bats. And those guys are very talented players. And one of those guys will win the job at shortstop. Coach, it seems like the, the key word this, this Zoom so far has been competitiveness throughout fall. What, what does an ultra-competitive fall session do for your club moving into the spring? Well, it, it, it's everything. That's what the fall is all about and understanding what we're about to embark upon in, in the spring. Even we have some of the COVID freshmen that went through a season last year. They don't know what the SEC is all about. We got to that starting line and they didn't get a chance to experience what a, a conference weekend's like. And, you know, that's what we're trying to get them prepared for. And certainly our new hitters are going to get to face a SEC frontline caliber pitching on a daily basis. And, you know, they're going to have some good days and some bad days and learning how to deal with those failures is what it's all about. And we've got some new pitchers that are super talented that are going to make great pitches. And, you know, some of our veterans are going to hit them off the scoreboard and being able to deal with that is what the fall is all about and handling that failure. So, you know, that's going to be the every fall. That's that's what the most important thing for us to get out of it is. Rob, how amazing has it been to see um, A.J. Minner become one of the best relievers in baseball this year? And then what Brooks has been able to do six years, six, seven years away from Major League Baseball and what he's doing with the Astros? You know, I got a, I got called A.J. on his birthday uh, probably three weeks ago. And, you know, we had a long talk just about, you know, how the how is it playing under COVID circumstances with nobody in the stands? And he said, you know what, Coach, it's a lot like, you know, going out in a fall scrimmage, there's nobody in the stands. It's about getting your work done. And that's 
kind of a blessing and a curse. You know, sometimes I feed off adrenaline and other times I need to go out there and focus on making pitches, but I've just gotten off to a good start and I'm confident and, and doing well. And he's continued to do that since, since we visited. And, you know, for Brooks, Brooks lives in my neighborhood and I've been able to keep up with him even when, um, you know, he was off in Korea and, you know, his family has grown uh, from one daughter to three daughters real quick. And I think this whole thing has been a blessing for Brooks and his family that he got an opportunity to stay stateside and, and get an opportunity to start off with the Cincinnati Reds and, you know, be with his wife when she needed his help with three young daughters and uh, to get traded to Houston, the hometown team. His journey and his determination uh, is something that, that I truly have always admired, even when he played for us. He's just so competitive and it's not going to take – you know, the word or the answer, you know, the answer, I can't, he can't do something. He's going to go and do it. But, you know, and to get his first big league save the other day was a big deal, but uh, it's been fun keeping up with him. And, you know, certainly now that he's around an awful lot more, just keeping in touch with him. All righty. Uh, thanks and gig him. Thanks coach. All right. Hey Thank Rob, this is fun. Being on. I appreciate you. Thank you coach. Appreciate you. Thanks, thanks coach. coach. All righty, fire away. Hold on, don't fire away, just a second, sorry. And now you can go. Bryce, how good did it feel just with the season cut off and you guys hadn't been together and then you have influx of some new talent too and a bunch of guys coming back. What was yesterday like for the guys to get back together? Man, it was awesome. Uh... Just getting the whole group back together. We've had we have a good nucleus coming back, and then like you said, with the influx of new talent coming in, it was it was cool to be on the field with everybody and see what kind of skills everybody can possess. And it's like anybody can hit batting practice at this level. Everybody's here for a reason, and it was cool to see how guys handled a real game situation. And I thought everybody did a great job. What's it like, and and what's the this? How important is this fall going to be to get another? Uh, fall with with coach Seeley, coach Kaye, coach Pennington kind of get a little bit more ingrained with that that newish offensive season that y'all started with last year right I think it's gonna be very important um as far as we have a lot of returners who which he implemented his new offense last year and it's been good because we're, we're going quicker this year since we don't have to relearn it we can help him push it down to the new guys and the younger guys and it's been flowing really well and he's been leaning on us and we've been leaning on him and it's just a lot more fluid already than it was because it's not as new. Like we're very, we're more familiar with it than we were a year ago. You think you'll play second again? And then what do you see from the two young shortstops battling it out with Harrison and Merkin? Uh, the plan right now is to play second base. Honestly, wherever the coaches put me, that can help us win is the, the main priority. And man, Kalai Harrison, kids, kids, an absolute stud. Kate Merka can swing the back and play defense. It's, it's going to be fun to see. And it's, we're very thankful they were in the recruiting class and they're both going to be big assets to this program either right away or at some point in their careers here. Hey Bryce, with you coming back, a couple other quote unquote super seniors coming back, do you think this is the deepest and their most talented roster you've had on this Aggie baseball program since you've been here? Absolutely. Hands down. I mean, we pulled up a PowerPoint the other day in one of our hitters meetings and I think collectively as a group, we have over, way over a thousand division one career college at bats coming back and just speaks volumes to the, to the potential that we have and the pitching staff we have coming back as well. And I don't know, everybody has known each other for three, four five years. So it's, we're all familiar and we know how to create the culture and keep the culture going in times of adversity. Bryce, with so many returners, what's the uh, competition level like at, at practice? I mean, are there are a lot of guys kind of, you know, battling for starting positions this early on. I mean, what, what's the feel? Absolutely. I mean, Coach Childress says it every day, freshman, senior, scholarship or not, everybody's going to get an opportunity to play and you have to go out there and earn it every single day. And I mean, this is probably one of the most competitive bunch of individuals I've ever been around. And just being, especially being six months away from this game, like every day we're going out at us, we're going after it at practice. And it's not just going after it after each other. It's going after it to push each other to get better. Because at the end of the day, if you push the guy alongside you to get better, it's going to benefit the team more in the long run. Bryce, with how many uh, starters and uh, starting pitchers that, that are going to be competing for jobs, is it fun for y'all as hitters to kind of have to get that little bit elevated level of, of competitiveness when, when there's so many guys jockeying for, for uh, several open positions? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's going to it's gonna benefit us tremendously, too, in the spring. We're facing, e like, elite, elite arms. That We have so many guys coming back that would have been drafted in a normal year. And just it's going to be fun to compete every single day in the scrimmage. And you can't really take a day off. Like, you have to bring it every day or you're going to get it shoved up you. Uh, some people on the outside looking in say you, you lost Lacey and you lost Roa. It's drafted as high as any university in the country. Um, when did that? When do you see the the young guys and guys that really maybe didn't have a role before last year? Can you look at them and say, "Hey, you know, there's not going to be a fall off with the kind of pitching that's brought to campus and then gets to go across the line." I mean, absolutely. I just those guys are in remarkable talents and got drafted where they did for a reason. They 100% earned it and deserve it. But I'm, I mean. The recruiting class we had coming in, the arms that I've, I've heard about, haven't really got to see a lot of the new guys so far, but just the pieces we have coming back and a guy like Chandler Joswalk, who's been through the fire, a guy like Bryce Miller, who has the potential to be a starter now. It's just, I don't think we're going to lack. Obviously, we're going to miss those guys because they're once in a generational talent. But as far as a collective group, I think we're going to be as sound and steady as, as always. Bryce, I feel like I wouldn't be doing my due diligence as a reporter if I didn't ask this, but what's the expectations for this program? we got to ask it every fall. So, so what's your expectation for this team? Same expectations as every year when you put on a Texas A&M jersey. Get to Omaha and be the last team standing and finally bring home a national championship that the city of College Station deserves and the university deserves. What do you think having a more veteran lineup, even with the JUCO transfers coming in, Bryce, so – what does that do for you guys? I think we just know how rhythm and flow the offense is supposed to go with all the with all the career at bats and all the maturity in the lineup. And I mean, y'all know how it goes. A Friday night SEC starter is probably going to be a first round pick, and just finding a way to score a run and a scratch run and get something flowing and going, and not getting frustrated in the third inning when we haven't gotten a hit. Just staying with the approach and staying with the plan because we've all experienced nice. adversity at some point in our career, and we should be able to handle that. How does, uh, with all the COVID precautions and, and things you have to do, how does practice look or feel different with the different things that you have to do to, to stay safe? Honestly, the only thing that's different is when we get together in a group, everybody has to be masked up. And I don't know if y'all have experienced it, but when you wear these gator deals and you're sweating, it's, it's pretty tough to breathe in. So guys will step away because we want to, if you need to take off your mask, you got to be social distance. So like for me, for myself, I feel like I'm waterboarding myself almost. So I have to step away, take a couple deep breaths or I'll get really lightheaded. Gotcha. What have been the early returns, Bryce, from the, uh, the transfer players, the Sturgis kid from UTSA, <clears throat> the two Grayson guys, Thompson and, and Taylor Smith, and then Minnick as well? Well, Breck Bennett hit an opposite field home run yesterday. That was pretty incredible. A guy put a charge into a ball, has a pretty swing, very athletic outfielder. Taylor Smith is a remarkable talent. Guy is one of the most toolsy catchers I've ever been a part of. Can hit, has a strong arm. Jordan Thompson can really run. And um, Sturgis, I've known, I, play, I, I was fortunate enough to play with Sturgis on the College Station 12 growing up in summer ball. And that guy has hit from the age of 12 to now. And he's, he's a decorated college hitter. And he's going to be a, a big piece to add to our lineup. Can he play anywhere? Does he have a – tell us a little bit more about him. What's his most natural position, Bryce? So he was actually – when we were growing up, he was a catcher. But yeah, he, at UTSA, I believe he played first base and left field. And he's been taking a lot of reps in left field here so far. But honestly, just having his bat in the lineup, the guy's very athletic, very good player, has a high baseball IQ. And it, you could plug him in anywhere, honestly. But he's been taking a lot of reps in left field. It's got to be a great situation. Jordan Thompson, Sturgis, Rody Barker back. I mean, you think about Zane Schmidt can play out there, Logan Britt, like corner outfield, just the outfield competition is something that's going to be really fun to watch, I think, this fall, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's what I think speaks volumes to this team this year is we have so much depth. This, this, this might be a really weird year with all this COVID stuff, and just knowing that we have so much depth that it can be the next man up mentality of something – unfortunate does happen and we're just very thankful to have that type of depth and that type of talent at every position really all righty thanks and gig them thank y'all thanks Bryce. Gig em. thanks Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. we're uh, waiting on Bryce Miller so it'll be a second
Hey, Justin. Austin is shooting rudder now, FYI. They are now? Yeah. That gives us 13 games, dude. We're never going to get that in. Four, 14 if we take Rockdale. Everyone, this is Dallas. Trying to avoid the rain. All righty. Uh, fire away. Bryce, what – what can you tell us about – what's your excitement level for the opportunity to maybe transition or get a good opportunity to transition into a starter's role? And how did that process begin? What, what did you think the summer was like for you in that transition? Um, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I haven't started since high school, but um, as I've gotten older um, through college, I've developed more pitches and become more comfortable with all my pitches. So, um yeah, going into the summer, that was my main focus, you know, getting back into that starters mentality and um, getting ready to go in the season or when the fall comes around. And what do you think? Oh, okay. I was happy with with how the how the summer went. I had, I mean, overall, I had a good summer. I had one bad outing that did not go as planned, but um, you know, I learned 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 something from every start, and I'm I'm happy with where I'm at. How much was uh, your focus through the summer in working backwards, working on some of those secondary pitches to be able to see the second, third round in the lineup as opposed to what you're doing at closing? Yeah, that was definitely one of the main things, you know. Um, just, you know, whenever I was closing, it was like come out for one inning and just go go all out every pitch and not really worried about, about showing all four pitches, you know, in one inning. But um, this summer, you know, I had to kind of plan for that and, you know, go first time through fastball, fastball slider, and then break out the curveball back at the end. And, um, I was, I was definitely happy with where I'm at um, with those pitches, and it was definitely a good experience this summer to um, get get more comfortable with those. Bryce, what would be you... the key to winning a job, to winning a, a weekend rotation spot, Bryce? Um, I'd say you know, I've the last three years of college, I've just been. I've been a short, you know, I've been used short. So my main thing is going to be being able to be consistent and stay strong through like after 50 pitches. Cause you know, I mean, last two years at A&M, the most I've thrown was three innings at Kentucky. So um, it'll, it's definitely going to be a change, you know, stay, also staying focused for a longer period of time instead of just all at once. So those are probably going to be my main things. Bryce, is this the deepest pitching staff you've been a part of here at A&M? Uh, it's hard to say. You know, we – every year coming in, it, it's, it's, it was different just because my first year, it was kind of – it was my first year, my first time meeting everybody and um, looking, you know, looking up at Docs and at, and at Asa. Um, but this year is different. You know, it's – we got a lot of new guys, but we also got a lot of guys that are like – that we know we know what they got and we got a lot of guys coming back. So – um, we're definitely very deep. I, I'm very excited to see how the fall goes and how everything plays out because we got just about every spot open in the rotation and for the whole staff. So it's it's going to be interesting. How do you uh, approach your your leadership role? You know, out in the bullpen with you know guys that have uh, had great stuff and you know really never had the adversity. You know, uh, we heard about Minich hitting an opposite field home run yesterday, probably against a guy who's never seen a pitch leave the yard that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's – we've we've discussed that. You know, it's it's uh, one of the main things for a lot of the new guys um, is going to be, you know, facing adversity in the fall because most of these guys that come in, they've, you know, straight out of high school where they're, they were their best pitcher in high school and uh, – or in JUCO, you know, they kind of dominated high school and JUCO. So – um, they're going to have to, you know, find a way to, to deal with adversity because they're not, they're not, they're throwing against way better competition now. And that's something that everybody has to know and everybody will go through throughout the fall. Um, so we've definitely discussed that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's different for me because I'm, I'm used to, you know, being in the bullpen and um, being down there. And now I'm, I won't be down there like as I normally am for the fall at least. So it's, it's definitely been a different type of role for me, but um, getting used to it. Bryce, how is this uh, fall start of practice different than years past with where you guys have COVID and everything going on and the fact that, you know, last spring you guys got the season cut short, so you've had longer than normal off season. I mean, just, you know, how's this different than, you know? 
Yeah, no, it's it's definitely been way different. Um, you know, we had that long break since the season got cut short, and luckily we were able, a lot of us were able to get out and play some summer ball and just kind of get get games going and get, you know, back into somewhat the swing of things. But um, even still, the fall has just been very, like, slow, and, you know, we've been kind of spread out and just things are different. You know, we we haven't had as much of an opportunity to get to know the new guys, so it's it's been kind of – it's been it's been tough just to be able to – you know, put names to faces and figure out really who everybody is instead of where normally, you know, we're around them all the time and, you know, we can go hang out at houses and stuff, but this year is different. So that's really been the toughest, toughest thing is just getting to know everybody, but we're getting used to it. You know, it's been about a month or month or two now since we've been back. So it's, it's getting normal, but you know, we're still, we're, we're, we're working through it. Does it make it, do, do you get, are you that much more, I guess, anxious to get these scrimmages going and get through the fall? The fact that, you know, you said it's kind of a slower start. You just, you guys just itching to get out there and play. Yeah, for sure. I know. I mean, especially I was, I was fortunate enough to go out and play for the Bombers this summer. So I was able to kind of get that, get that feeling a little bit, but there's obviously nothing like throwing at Olsen and, you know, with, with everything normal with the, with the stands, the stands pack. So I know, me and everybody's very excited to get to the season, but um, we got a lot of work to do before then. And we're just, we're happy to be able to be able, be able to get out here and scrimmage and have that opportunity. So um, we're, we were, had a lot of fun yesterday with the first scrimmage, but looking forward to the next few days and the coming weeks. Bryce, what, what does having a more veteran ball club do for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's, It'll definitely be good. It's it's an interesting, like we have a lot of guys returning, but we also have like you look at the whole freshman class, like we have from last year, we have all of them coming back, but they also haven't had any experience in SEC play. So it's like they're returners, but they're kind of not. So it's like it's it's interesting, but it's definitely it'll definitely help. You know, we got we got guys that all throughout the lineup and all throughout the staff that have thrown many many innings and you know, have been in tight spots and aren't out there, you know, for the first time with those first time jitters. So it's, it's good. It's, it, it helps them out or help the team out and it'll help out the new guys. Just, it'll be able to help them learn and, you know, see what, what they need to do whenever they're, they're in those situations. Bryce, what, uh, what do you remember about your, your best high school start? Do you remember anything going back that far? Uh, yeah, I had a start against, um east central in high school that i went the whole game i think i gave up i don't think they scored i don't know i was high school i was mainly focused on hitting and playing outfield so it was it was like i'd go out and throw and you know then i'd come in and worry about trying to get a hit but um i also my senior year i was i was most games i would go six seven innings so i'd no, I, I, I can do it because I did it in high school without really even training for it. So um, it, it's, it's been, it's fun, you know, thinking back on that. And that's, that's where I want to be again this year. So it's, it's exciting. Bryce, how intriguing is the idea that Trevor Werner might also at least compete to make the same transition as a guy who was a back end guy in the short season last year, explosive, explosive arm. And then now he looks like he might be trying to – can you take us through just how intriguing that that proposition could be of Trevor Warner maybe trying to compete for becoming a starter? Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, interesting deal there. Um, he's obviously an extreme athlete, um, I think, and with, I mean, a crazy arm. He just – it'll be interesting to see what how it plays out because, I mean, he didn't really throw that much, obviously, through, what, two innings in the season last yeah. year and then – got like three innings this summer so I don't I don't know how it'll be interesting to see how if he can start and play the field or if they're going to have him you know play the field and then start like on Sunday that way he can play and not be sore Friday Saturday or or what how it's going to work out it'll be interesting but it it'll definitely I mean I definitely think if he focuses on it I think he can do it because he's a hell of an athlete but See how that plays out. I, I think if I'm starting, it'd be it'd be good to have him in the back end as a closer, also just to have that 
have a guy come in and throw 98 right out of the field. But who knows? Yeah. We'll see what happens. No doubt. Ross, how does your uh, training uh, change from being a, a reliever into now trying to extend yourself out and, and be a starting pitcher? Yeah, main thing, main thing I've really focused on is um, whenever I – so as a reliever, you know, I'd come in and I would throw bullpens. Like right now I'd be throwing bullpens, but they would be short and I'd be trying to be more explosive and not really focused on throwing throwing long. But now, you know, the last few bullpens I've thrown have gone up like 40, 50 pitches. So that's the main thing that I've been focusing on, just being able to – hold velocity and hold, you know, endurance throughout the whole pin and go longer. And then also just throwing more. I've always been a guy that long tosses quite a bit. And so I haven't been taking really any days off throwing wise, just maybe one day a week take off from throwing. But other than that, you know, get out there and keep my arm moving, keep long tossing and being ready to go. I've been also a main thing trying to gain weight which I've been trying to do for forever, it seems like, but I've actually put a little more emphasis in that. And I'm, I'm the heaviest I've been right now also, so I think that will definitely help going into the season. Um, if I can have more weight on, and it will definitely help going deeper into innings and throwing more innings throughout the season. What What's the heaviest you've been? What, what are you weighing in at now, Bryce? Uh, I was 197 this morning, so. What's I'm, the goal? I'm trying to be like 205 by the season, so. 205, 210 max, which it's been difficult putting on weight forever, and I'm finally been able to see some some movement in that area. So I, I think I finished the bomber season at like 185. So I'm actually moving up for once. So I'm, I'm happy with where we're at. I think most of us are experts in that weight gain area, so let us know if you need some tips. <laughs> All righty. Thanks and gig them. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks. Man, we're having fun here now. Come on, boys. <laughs>